Manchester United are looking at four more deals before the end of the transfer window, but is that enough for the season? McTominay to Napoli, deal accepted. Talk of Sancho swap with Chelsea players. What's that all about? Plus all the latest Manchester United news and transfer news that will keep you right up to date with everything. Welcome to Man United Review. My name's Jamie. Before we get into it, please smash a like on the video. and Let's jump straight into it. So... Let's kick off with the breaking news that's come out this morning from Samuel Luckers, who is saying that Manchester United's provisional intention is to make one signing and sell three players before the transfer deadline day. So four more deals potentially this week. Um, and he mentions Manuel Ugarte. I've got news on him coming up. Scott McTominay, talk news of him coming up. Jaden Sancho, news on him coming up. And Hannibal Mabry, um, which, you know, they're all players that are linked with leaving. Hannibal maybe has got interest from um, from Rangers and Celtic, multiple French teams as well. Um, there was even interest, I think, from a couple of championships club, clubs as well regarding Hannibal Mabry. Um, I'm soon going to bring you all the updates on Sancho, McTominay and Ugarte in a second. But I've got to be honest, when I first saw that, I thought, does that really still... Does that leave us a bit light still, do you think? Like, I'd still like to see at least maybe one more midfielder and still I'd like to see a fullback come in. But, um, but yeah, because because I suppose the question is, are we would we be weaker than last season? Because if we're going to let McTominay go, Amrabat's gone, that's two midfielders that are gone. Casemiro, you know, I still don't think he's capable of running the midfield by himself for certain games. Other games, he might be all right, but, um, you know, get, just getting bringing in Ugarte, have we massively strengthened? The only thing I could think of if we're not going to bring in another midfielder is that Toby Collier is going to get given given a chance, which, which I'm happy with. Um, I would just like to see him be getting more minutes if that's the case. Like, what was the point in bringing on McTominay at the end of the Brighton game if you're planning to sell him? And that not giving Toby Collier some minutes because I think Toby Collier is a is is a I don't think he's right or good enough to necessarily start every game. But I thought he had a really good preseason, looks really promising, gives us a little bit of legs in midfield. So unless that's the plan, and then the fullback area for me, I was thinking about this after the the Brighton game because um, I know some of you in the comments are not really that concerned with the with fullback because obviously if Malaysia and Luke Shaw do come back, then we are are adequately covered but if they're not because that might not be until October and then there's still going to be question marks around Malasia is he going to come back fully fit and will he pick up little niggly injuries here and there obviously Luke Shaw we know is injury prone um, and it's not just and you can't play Masrawi and Dallow 90 minutes two times a week for the rest for now until you know God knows when Shaw and Malasia are going to be back and I was thinking after the Brighton game, Brighton changed, brought on some attacking players at the end of the game, which obviously helped them win the game. And it maybe would have been nice to bring on some fresh legs at fullback as well, but we physically couldn't because we do not have anybody else in that area. So it's still a big concern for me, the fullback positions. Um, and I still think we'd be a little bit light in midfield, but we we'll obviously need to wait and see. It's just coming from Samuel Lucker, who is a credible source, but um, there may be some other opportunities later on in the window. Obviously, there's talk about Adrian Rabio. Just quickly, I mentioned that, um, saying that apparently he's waiting for Manchester United, but you know that potentially could be one. Amrabat, I've got news on him um, coming up as well. So personally, I still think we would be a little bit light in certain areas, but let me know what you think in the comments. Um Right, so let's go through all the McTominay news next. So David Ornstein came out yesterday with an exclusive saying Napoli um, agreed deal with Manchester United for Scott McTominay subject to all parties being satisfied on player terms. 30 million euro plus percentage of future sale. Important for Man United um, financial fair play compliance. Manuel Ugarte potentially... Um, potential signing would be aided by the 27-year-old's exit. So that was an exclusive yesterday from David Ornstein. And if you if you watched yesterday's video, there was news from um, a Italian outlet that was saying that apparently United's deal um, had been accepted. And I did say I wanted to wait for a bit more credibility where you don't get more credible than David Ornstein. He's the most credible journalist, I think, in the UK um, for football transfer news coming out with that, with that exclusive. Um, 
And then Sport Italia via Get Italian Football News said that Scott McTominay could undergo his Napoli medical on Tuesday and the move could conclude on Wednesday. So that's, um, you know, that's going to go through fairly quickly, according to that report. De Marzio said that Napoli has an agreement with Manchester United for Scott McTominay at 30.5 million euros, but the player still has to settle some issues with United. Um, Jamie Jackson, who's a credible source, said that if Scott McTominay agrees to the move to Napoli, the fee paid by the Syria club would include add-ons. United already agreed a £25 million deal with the transfer subject to McTominay's agreement, so it could be 25 with some add-ons plus a percentage of next sale. Um, so that doesn't seem like a bad deal so far, does it, in my opinion? And then Fabrizio Romano said, after the agreement between the clubs, United and Scott McTominay must now clarify some details about his departure. As with Aaron wan Scott McTominay has already said yes to Napoli and has spoken with Antonio Conte. Now, I don't get that because there's been a lot of talk around, you know, United doing some kind of deal or having to pay off Scott McTominay, which I can't understand for the life of me why, because the the issue with Bissaka is we did the plus one extension in Bissaka's contract, which meant that Aaron wan was entitled to half or, or, or a percentage of his sell-on fee because it's not Bissaka's choice to do the extension, it's United's choice. So there's something in the contract, if you remember I bought your news from Phil Brown, who's really um, reliable, Said, said that there's some kind of clause. But to my understanding, we haven't extended Scott McTominay's contract. So why would we need to pay him money or come up with a compensation package for Scott McTominay to leave? Because we have it like if we'd done the plus one, then yes, that would make sense because it's the same as Wan Bissaka's situation. But we haven't done the plus one on McTominay. So why do we need to negotiate like a severance pay or something for him? I don't understand. I don't understand why we would need to do that unless there is some stupidity in player contracts where if they get into the last year, they're still entitled to paying out, in which case who on earth at Man United has been giving out these sort of nonsense contracts? Um, Unbelievable. But the positive news is that Scott McTominay is looking very likely to, to obviously go to Napoli. Deal has been agreed. The reports over the last few days has been that um, that would be, he'd be okay or he'd, be all right going to Napoli. It was his preferred choice. That's why Fulham pulled out of the race because um, Scott McTominay didn't want to go to Fulham and they ended up obviously getting Sanderberg. Um, so yeah, and, and it's pure profit as well from a financial fair place perspective. Scott McTominay is obviously a homegrown player. That is pure financial fair play profit, which is money in the bank, which could either then be used towards the Ugarte deal or potentially bring in other players. But obviously I've just brought you news from Samuel Lucker saying that United might not be looking to bring in any other players. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. I, I think a good move all around. I don't think Scott McTominay's you know, he's a great professional, obviously one of our own coming through the youth team and stuff, but his time at United has come to an end, in my opinion. I don't think he suits the style of play that we want to play. I think he would be perfect for an Antonio Conte system, though, being honest with you, because um, he likes to play a lot more defensive and more kind of counter-attacking, which I think does suit kind of Scott McTominay's skill set where he doesn't have to be relied to play out from the back and get on the ball very often and just be like a bit of a, you know, a bit of a penalty box nuisance. Um, and I wish him all the best if he goes on. I hope he has a fantastic last kind of few years of his career because he is coming up 28 now. So, um, yeah, generally wish him all the best. He's been a good player to have around, but there comes a time for every every player where we just need to move forward. And I think this is the right decision personally. Um, but let me know what you think about Scott McTominay to Napoli in the comments. Now, one of the other players we mentioned before that is potentially looking to leave it, or, or we're looking to sell or move on is Jade and Sancho. Obviously, there's been a lot of noise over the last couple of days regarding a move to Juventus. And then there's been a couple of random weird stories coming out potentially about a move to Chelsea. So I'm going to go through and just clarify who said what, um, what's the credibility and that sort of stuff. So first of all, Sky Sports came out saying that Chelsea are exploring a deal for Jadon Sancho. It is thought that a proposal from Chelsea could see a player go the other way. And then um, Get Italian Football News claimed that Chelsea could offer Manchester United a midfielder in a move for Jadon Sancho. De Marzio come out saying that Chelsea could offer Raheem Sterling or Ben Chilwell, Chilwell in their move for Jadon Sancho. Now, 
Demacio used to be really, really good and is still fair is still a, a I'd say he's more of a um you know more reliable than unreliable, but not not an Ornstein or a Romano anymore. Um doesn't get everything everything kind of right, but he is still a decent kind of source. Um I mean you've probably seen it already. Raheem Sterling or Ben Chilwell. Ben Chilwell, absolutely no. Thank you very much. Mentioned that on this channel multiple times. He's more injury prone than Luke Shaw, and I don't think he's that good either. Um, so definitely would be a void in that one. Raheem Sterling, I mean, like, I suppose it depends on how desperate you are to get rid of Sancho, doesn't it? But the thing with Sterling is... Um, you know, he's five years older, I think, than Jade and Sancho, and he's on more money. So, yeah, that's an odd one for me. I'll go through the rest of the reports, and then I'll um, give you a bit more of, more of my opinion on it personally. But um, but on initial thought, I was like, please, no. Like, yeah, definitely not in my uh, for me personally. Um, and then we had news from The Telegraph, who um, are quite reliable, more for Chelsea. Um, this journalist is actually quite credible when it comes to Chelsea news, saying that United would like to receive a fee of around £40 million for Sancho, but a loan with an obligation to buy appears to be the most likely offer at this stage. They are aware of Chelsea's interest, and the Blues are hoping they might even be um, interested in a swap deal involving Sterling. The Jason but also said that talks are further advancing with the event is to sign Sancho before Friday's 11 p.m. deadline. At present, the Serie A club looks more looks a more likely destination than Chelsea. The Telegraph also said that it remains to be seen whether Manchester United would have any desire to sign Sterling. Raheem Sterling is earning around three hundred thousand pound a week at Chelsea, which is you know there's the kind of point. Why would United want to swap Sancho? for Sterling when Sterling's five years older and on more money, unless Sterling was willing to take like a 50% minimum pay cut to come, um, which, you know, why would he want to do that at his, at his age? Um, that would just be an absolute nonsense for me. Um, yeah, no thank you for um, personally. I mean, if we're going to do swaps with Chelsea, I've heard Lavier's name being mentioned. That would be a good shout. Um you know, Casido. I don't think I don't even think Chelsea would be stupid enough to do that. But you just never know, do you, with the way Chelsea are doing their kind of transfer business at the moment? Um, obviously, Cole Palmer. Again, that's that's very unlikely. Um, who else would I take from Chelsea? Cucurella, potentially. Um, and what's their other young midfielder? Is it Chuck? Chuck? Chuck Womenzi, is it, I think, from their midfield? He's a decent young young um good good midfielder, so I wouldn't be against that. So if you're gonna do swaps with Chelsea, let's be a bit more realistic and not look at their players, one that they want to get rid of. Um but then also would just not you know what I mean, like swapping Sterling for Sancho, I don't think Ineos are that stupid. That kind of noise when I, um, reports when I read it felt a little bit to me like negotiation tactics from United to try and get Juventus to the table or try and get or try and force like a for some kind of deal with Juventus. That's what I felt personally when I read those stories because I I don't think Ineos would be stupid enough to do a Sterling swap for Sancho. But again, it depends on contract price. You know, if Sterling did want to take a fifty percent pay cut, and we can save hundred grand a week in wages and get rid of Sancho, who, you know, I, who has issues behind the scenes with Ten Hag, you know, in that scenario maybe, but not for not not on paper, not just looking at it and reading the reports for me personally. But you can let me know what you think in the comments. And then there's been a few more stories. So Fabrizio Romano said that Chelsea are aware of the situation of Sancho, but Juventus are the team currently in negotiations. And he also said this morning that a new contact between Jaden Sancho's agent and Juventus will take place today to discuss a loan with a buy clause and the salary. So it still looks like it's more likely to be um, Juventus talk at the moment is because Juventus don't have the fee 
um, or the funds available to buy Sancho for what United are asking for, which is around £40 million. I don't think they've got the funds to pay for his wages, although it depends if they move Chiesa on, they might be able to do that. So it's looking at the minute the most likely scenario. Um, and obviously things can change. This is just my opinion at the time of recording this video is that it may be a loan to Juventus with an obligation to buy. I think that's key for any loan deal with Sancho, but we might still have to pay a percentage of his wages for the next for the next 12 months. Um, thinking about it, you know, he's on 250 grand a week. Chiesa, who is the player they want to remove, is on 150 grand a week. So possibly it could be that they pay 150 grand towards Sancho's wages. We pay the other 100 for the next till, I don't know, May, June, or whenever the the, trans, the window opens next summer. Um, I mean, if we've got a guaranteed fee at the end of it, it is what it is, isn't it? But there's no real interest in Sancho for the price that we want. We don't want to be mugged off. We don't want to send him out on loan and pay his, his wages without an obligation to buy. So it might just be, if that's the only deal on the table, then it is what it is. We'll have to obviously wait and see how that develops and, you know, see, see what, actually materialises with the talks that apparently Juventus are going to be having today with with Sancho and the agent and the club and see how that develops. Um, but let me know what you think about the Sancho situation in the comments. Um, and then there's been a couple of updates on Ugarte. So Manuel Ugarte's move to Manchester United can now be, per be a permanent deal. United are set to close the deal if all goes to plan with Scott McTominay to Napoli. I, guess, I think I mentioned this in yesterday's video that it'll be interesting to see um, in terms of you know, why the Ugarte deal is taking so long. Is it because we're negotiating the fee or is it because we don't have the funds available? Um, going off of that, I kind of got the feeling that maybe we were looking at an obligation, like a loan, if Scott McTominay stayed. But now we've got the funds potentially coming in for Scott McTominay, they're going to look to do the permanent deal. So that might be what the holdup's been around Ugarte, um, as well as the negotiations around the price, I think. Um, but I think the, the biggest issue has been, well, do we have the money to buy him? that's relying on player sales or if we didn't sell McTominay or Sancho, for example, we didn't get the funds, then maybe we would look at an obligation like a loan with an obligation to buy next summer. I think that's what's mainly been the holdup going off of that report from Fabrizio Romano, but obviously you can let me know what you think in the comments. Um, Romano also said that Manuel Agat is currently in Paris and he is ready to travel any moment next week to join Manchester United. So I think this deal once Scott McTominay gets agreed to go to Napoli, I think it'll be um, simultaneously we'll then kind of look to get the Agati deal done. That's the hope and that's the kind of talk um, really between the lines. David Ornstein said that Manuel Agati to Manchester United could be aided um, should Scott McTominay's £25.4 million sale to Napoli be finalised. So again, Ornstein kind of confirming what I just mentioned there where it looks like we have been waiting to generate funds in order to buy Ugarte, but if we didn't sell players to generate the funds, we would have been then been looking at a loan for next, um, like an obligation to buy next season. Um, and then Ben Jacobs has come out saying that Jean Claude Blanc is understood to be using his relationship with PSG to help Dan Ashworth and the recruitment team over a deal for Manuel Ugarte. So, um, all roads pointing towards McTominay to Napoli. We'll get finally Ugarte in. Um, you know, I, th I think you've got to will improve the team and the midfield, but it's obviously going to need time to settle. It's just frustrating. It's we've had to wait all this time to get that deal done, but it is what it is. We've obviously had a, a lot of moving pieces to get that deal done by the looks of things and obviously other priorities in the team as well. Like the defence has been the priority this summer. Hopefully we've got that sorted with Delit and um, Lenny Euro and obviously Masraoui coming in. We needed a striker. Xerxes was done. So they were the kind of priority positions. Midfield is the next priority, getting Ugarte in. And then hopefully um, going forward, we can start strengthening in the, in the other areas. And there is still time in the, in the window, but there's not that many other players heavily linked with United. One player that might... Um, not becoming is Amrabat. Obviously, he's still still at Fiorentina. He hasn't moved anywhere yet. But um, Italian reports are saying that Sophie and Amrabat's hopes of returning to Manchester United seem over with United unwilling to meet Fiorentina's 15 million euro asking price. You know, I've, I've kind of mentioned a lot in this video around my fears with the midfield because I still think even if we get Ugarte, we may be still a little bit light because I, I wouldn't be against bringing in Amrabat. So whether whether there's going to be like a late deal potentially once Fiorentina get a little bit desperate towards the end of the end of the window, 
who knows? It's unlikely at this stage. Um, Amrabat, Rabio, there's still noise around Adrian Rabio, so we'll have to wait and see um, see what happens um, regarding this. I think some of it might depend on Sancho as well. If Sancho goes out on loan, then obviously we're not going to get the funds in for him, so that might actually be the end of the transfer window for us in terms of incomings. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments. That's you all up to date with the latest transfer news. Um, yeah, share your thoughts in the comments below. Do enjoy reading them. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I will see you in the next one.